Now, the United States Department of Energy have, have just released some information about what they believe is the battery storage medium of the future. The interesting thing is it actually pretty much supports what most of us now believe. Sodium is here, but it's a certain type of sodium battery that they say could potentially dominate this market. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting myself, my family over the last couple of months. It's been, been an insane time, something I never would have expected that it would have happened to me or happened to my family. And I have to say, you guys have done for me what I never expected anyone to do. Thank you so much. A new battery design could help ease integration of renewable energy into the nation's electrical grid at lower cost using earth abundant materials, meaning earth abundant metals, according to a study just published in Energy Storage Materials. A research team led by the Department of Energy's Pacific Northwest National Laboratory demonstrated that the new design for a grid energy storage battery built with low cost metals, sodium and aluminium provides a pathway towards a safer and more scalable stationary energy storage system. Obviously, if we can avoid using lithium as much as possible and use sodium instead, well, that is the key to proving the naysayers wrong. There's not enough lithium, says Toyota. There's not enough lithium for EVs, says Toyota. Yeah, actually, there is, because we don't even need lithium. Well, at least not much of it. Nowhere near as much of it as what the industry or what the naysayers believe. We show that this new molten salt battery design has the potential to charge and discharge much faster than other conventional high temperature sodium batteries operate at a lower temperature and maintain an excellent energy storage capacity, said Gu Sheng Li, a material scientist at PNNL and the principal investigator of the research. You know what? One of the things that people are ignoring is the fact that they're saying this battery operates at much lower temperature than lithium ion batteries, lithium ion phosphate, or just lithium ternary nickel-based chemistry batteries. I have seen quite a few fires in lithium batteries. For example, every single battery that LG Chem sold in Australia for energy storage has been recalled, every single one. Crazy. No one's even reported on that anywhere. So having this new medium where the temperature, operating temperature is much lower, means, well, much, much less likely to catch on fire. We are getting similar performance with this new sodium-based chemistry at over 100 degrees Celsius, lower temperatures than commercially available high temperature sodium batteries technologies while using a much more earth abundant material. Imri Gayuk, director of the Department of Energy's Office of Electricity Energy Storage Program, which supported this research noted, this battery technology, which is built with low cost, domestically available materials, brings us one step closer toward meeting our nation's clean energy goals. Another big thing it might do is reduce our massive dependence on Chinese batteries and Chinese manufacturing. The new sodium-based molten salt battery uses two distinct reactions. The team previously reported a neutral molten salt reaction. The new discovery shows that this neutral molten salt can undergo a further reaction into an acidic molten salt. Critically, crucially, this second acidic reaction mechanism increases the battery's capacity. Specifically, after 345 charge and discharge cycles at high current, this acidic reaction me mechanism retained 82.8% of peak charge capacity. So there's a long way to go here, but it certainly looks very promising. The energy that a battery can deliver in the discharge process is called its specific energy density, which is expressed as watt hours per kilogram or watts per kilo. The, although the battery is in early stage or coin cell testing, the researchers claim that it could result in a practical energy density of 100 watts per kilo. In comparison, the energy density for lithium ion batteries used in commercial electronics and electric vehicles is around 170 to 250 watts per kilo. However, the new sodium aluminium battery has the advantage of being much cheaper and easier to produce in the United States from much more abundant materials, which are so much easier to actually get access to. P 
PNNL scientists collaborated with colleagues at the US-based renewable energy pioneer Nexeris to assemble and test the battery. Nexeris, through their new business, Adena Power, supplied their patented solid-state sodium-based electrolyte to PNNL to test the battery's performance. This crucial battery component allows the sodium ions to travel from the negative anode to the positive cathode side of the battery as it charges. Our primary goal for this technology is to enable low-cost, daily shifting of solar energy into the electrical grid over a 10 to 24 hour period, said Vince Sprinkle, a PNNL battery technology expert with more than 30 patented designs for energy storage systems and associated technology. This is a sweet spot where we can start to think about integrating higher levels of renewables into the electrical grid to provide true grid resiliency from renewable resources such as wind and solar power. Sprinkle was part of the team that developed the, this battery's new flexible design, which also shifted the battery from a traditional tubular shape to a flat, scalable one that can more easily be stacked and expanded as the technology develops from coin-sized batteries to a larger grid-scale demonstration size. More importantly, this flat cell design allows the cell capacity to be increased by simply using a thicker anode, while the researchers leveraged in this work to demonstrate a triple capacity cell sustained discharge of 28.2 hours under laboratory conditions. Most current battery technologies, including lithium ion batteries, are well suited for short term energy storage, not so much for long term. To meet the demand for 10 plus hours of energy storage will require the development of new, low cost, safe, and long duration battery concepts beyond current state of the art battery technologies. This research provides a promising lab scale demonstration toward that goal. Now there is another battery technology we already have in existence, flow batteries, which can enable longer term energy storage. And I've talked about those on the channel before. I'll put some links in the description below to my videos on the iron flow battery technology. The ability to store energy generated by renewable energy and release it on demand to the electrical grid has driven rapid advances in battery technology with many new designs competing for attention and customers. Each new variation must satisfy the demands of its own niche use. Some batteries, such as those having PNNL's freeze-thaw battery design, are capable of storing energy generated seasonally for months at a time, maybe even longer than a year. But obviously, in many places of the world, battery storage won't be needed for much of the year, say summer and those shoulder seasons of summer. Compared with the seasonal battery, this new design is especially adept at short to medium term grid energy storage over 12 to 24 hours. It is a variation of what's called a sodium metal halide battery. A similar design employing a nickel cathode as part of the system has been shown effective at commercial scale and is already commercially available. We have eliminated the need for nickel, a relatively scarce and expensive element without sacrificing battery performance, said Lee. Another advantage of using aluminium over nickel is that the aluminium cathode charges more quickly, which is crucial to enable the longer discharge demonstrated in this work. With this milestone reached, the team is focusing on further improvements to increase the discharge duration, which could greatly improve grid flexibility for greater incorporation of renewable power sources. And because it operates at a lower temperature than lithium-based batteries, it can be manufactured with inexpensive battery materials, instead of requiring more complex and expensive components like cooling systems and processes as in conventional high temperature sodium batteries, said David Reed, a PNNL battery expert and study co-author. So basically this new battery does have some advantages over sodium iron batteries, which are exactly that, cheaper materials, cheaper cost to manufacture, and operating at lower temperatures. In 2023, the state of the art for grid energy storage using lithium ion batteries is about four hours of energy storage capacity, said Sprenkel. This new system could significantly increase the amount of stored energy capacity if we can reach the expected cost targets for materials and manufacturing. Out of the study, the researchers estimated that a sodium aluminium battery design based on inexpensive raw materials could cost just $7 
per kilowatt hour for the active materials. Through optimization and increasing the practical energy density, they project that this cost could be lowered even further. This promising low-cost grid-scale storage technology could enable intermittent renewables like wind and solar power to contribute more dynamically to the nation's electrical grid. Now, $7 per kilowatt hour, give you some context, the current cost per kilowatt hour, depending on the battery technology, lithium ion phosphate, you're looking at about $90, lithium ion batteries that are nickel-based chemistries, you're looking closer to about $130 to $170, depending on who's, where the numbers are coming from. But those are general ideas. As you can see, $7 per kilowatt hour, it's miles, it's miles away from the current cost of lithium ion batteries, lithium ion phosphate batteries, even sodium batteries. Sodium batteries currently you're looking at a cost of around about 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour. That will come down as we see mass manufacturing. It's estimated to come down by about 30% though. So possibly 60 to 70 US dollars per kilowatt hour. Now we're saying $7 per kilowatt hour. Is this possible? I don't actually know. This is what the researchers claim. Even if they're wrong by a factor of three, even if it's $21 per kilowatt hour, so let's just triple their estimates, it's still only one fourth the cost or one third the cost of lithium ion and sodium batteries. This is truly or could be truly a revolution in battery technology. This would mean that battery energy storage would completely disrupt fossil fuels within the shortest period of time we could possibly imagine. It would happen much, much quicker than what everyone is predicting, but we're still years away, I think, from mass manufacturing these batteries. That's the sad part of this news. Neil Kidner, a study co-author and president of Adena Power, a sodium solid state battery manufacturer, is collaborating with PNL, is collaborating with PNL to advance sodium-based battery technology. This research demonstrates that our sodium electrolyte works not only with our patented technology, but also with our sodium aluminium battery design, he said. We look forward to continuing our partnership with the PWNL team towards advancing sodium battery technology. If this pays off, if this works, you know, even if it takes until 2030 for these batteries to work, it doesn't matter because there is no other battery technology in the world that I can see that will cost $7 per kilowatt hour or 14 or even $21 per kilowatt hour. My friends, this could be the answer to the world's energy storage needs. For those of you sending me emails telling me that I'm wrong about the future of the world being a renewable future, which is based around solar, wind, and battery storage. Well, yeah, physics can't beat $7 per kilowatt hour. That would be incredible. Thank you for watching.